You are tuned in to Kids in the Pit. Hey guys, it's Gabe from the Kids in the Pit podcast. Today I'm joined by John from the band Dead to Fall. Let's do it. What up? Hi, John. I'm Gabe. Mind if I ask you some questions about your musical life? Yeah, absolutely. But first, what is that shark's name? Um, Gregory. Gregory? Yes. Nice. Gregory the shark. Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, let's do it, man. Okay. So what do you do in Dead to Fall? Uh, I'm the singer in Dead to Fall. Uh, well, you know, screamer, I guess. Some people like my dad, who's a classical musician, would say I don't really sing. I do more screaming than singing. But the vocalist, let's say it that way. Yeah. So how long has Dead to Fall been a band? Um, I mean, it's a weird question because there was like a chunk of time that we weren't a band in kind of the middle. But we were a band from 1998 or 99 through 2008. And then 2015 to now we've been like semi-average. So like, you know, 20 something years of being since I started the, or was in the band, uh, technically didn't start the band. Somebody else was a singer right away at the beginning. But uh, the however many years that adds up to, if you want to take out that chunk of time. But I'd say about 20 years is probably a good number. I'm not going to do the math, but 20 years, Neither I guess, I. works. I'm so, a musician, man. I only count to four. That's it. Okay. So for those not familiar with Dead to Fall, what song should they look up? That, that's an interesting question because there's like multiple eras of Dead to Fall, right? You know, so I think uh, the Eternal Gates of Hell is kind of like the classic from like the very beginning of the band. Uh, Chum Fiesta is probably a big favorite uh, for people. People love the Shark Attack song. Uh, by the time you drop this podcast, we'll have released a new song called Cerro de la Muerte, which is coming out uh, tomorrow morning at midnight. Are you guys a Spanish band now? No, uh, it's actually a mountain in Costa Rica. Uh, and oh. I was um, I was working on a song that was kind of just fit the title and it means mountain of death. Uh, and I kept having to cross the mountain of death to get to the beach. And I kept thinking about this mountain and it's kind of like a metaphor to the, the mountain of, of, uh, of struggles that you have in your life and the way that you deal with them or don't deal with them. So I kind of stole this mountain that I was thinking about and tied it into the song that I was writing and then just stole the Spanish name for it. Yeah. That's cool. Um, I interviewed, uh, Bo from Avail pretty recently. He lives in Costa Rica, so. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, it's one of my favorite places on earth, man. I love Costa Rica. Yeah, I'd love to go there sometime. And and apparently there's just monkeys rock, walking around. There are monkeys all over the place, yeah. It sounds amazing. The uh, the howler monkey is, you don't see them as often as you see maybe the Koopachins. The Koopachins are the smart ones that'll get into your backpack and like they under, they can do zippers and buttons and steal your stuff while you're swimming. But the, the howler monkeys are like the second or third lo- uh, loudest mammal in the world. And they make this growling noise. You just hear it at like in the morning and then at like sunset time uh, coming from the jungle. And it's just this like, like really demonic noise coming out of the woods. Sounds like an evil like demon dog. Is it like a, is it like a rooster, but in Costa Rica and also a demon? No, because they have roosters there. They have lots of roosters there. But it is, uh, I would say like probably a hundred times louder than a rooster. It's like, it's louder than a lion. So do they just go, like, are they? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, they, we actually, in one of the other new songs we're going to put out called Empire of Pines, we have a bunch of different samples of different um, places in nature. Uh, and when Anton traveled to Belize, he got a sample of a howler monkey on an audio recording. And so that's at the very beginning of it, along with a couple other bird samples. And uh, one of my favorite owls, uh, the barred owl, which is my, my favorite owl of all time. This is the one that goes, If you That's live in the cool. Midwest, you've probably heard it. I we live on the East Coast, so yeah, maybe I know they. I've heard them in Atlanta. Um, I'm not quite sure how far north they go, but I know a lot of people. I've heard them all over the country. Uh, it's yeah, a very live- popular owl, and it's probably one of my favorite owl sounds. It's very quintessential owl, you know. Yeah, we live like up in Delaware, so oh, Delaware. Yeah, we're in Delaware. Yeah, pretty far up from uh, um, Georgia. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, I, I, you know what, this is going to be a great research for me to do is to figure out where exactly the barred owls live, because I do, I think they're pretty cool. But anyway, so we threw some of those different samples in the front of that song, uh, just because it ties into, um, I like to do a lot of hiking. 
And that song is about um, uh, the hiking I did in Florida off the Florida trail. It's called Empire of Pines. Uh, and it's just about needing to get away from humanity and away from other people and just get out into the woods and do some hiking by myself uh, and just reconnect with my brain a little bit out there. And so I stole just or took different samples of different recordings I have from all over the, the world that we've taken. That's really cool. So, Wait. Yeah, your question about which song I could go like into a different couple places, right? You know, like the newer stuff or the older stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So do you just have at the beginning of your song, do you just have did you say you have a howler monkey at the beginning just screaming? It's really, really faint. So you'll hear um, a couple bird chirps and then you'll hear this really faint sound of the howler monkey at the beginning of it. Yeah, but it's like buried. It almost sounds like this ominous, like like the growling's really far away. And then it just like uh, comes out, comes out of the sound at you. And it's just this really low, like, oh, like that. Oh, I'll check but it out. I had one once outside of a hostel I stayed at in uh, Tamarindo in Costa Rica. It was like right outside my window at 6 a.m. doing its growling noises. And I was like, what is that? And that's when I figured out it was a howler monkey. Because I was like, what? Is there like a demon dog? What is this thing? Why is it so loud? If I if I just was like going to sleep and I woke up in the middle of the night at 3 a.m. and just heard, Whoa, I don't think I'd be able to fall back asleep. Right? It's like, I, I think once you realize it's a howler monkey, you're like, all right, that's chill. That's not something that's going to come after me. But just hearing that noise, it scared the snot out of me, man. I was terrified. Yeah, if you don't know about howler monkeys... And you just hear that, you're just a uh, good luck. Well, you know what? Anybody watching the podcast knows about howler monkeys now. Well, yeah. So, so we're, we're also educational, you know. Yeah. If any one of you watching uh, is gonna go to Costa Rica, keep that in mind. That's it. So, what is your favorite place you've toured in, and why? So that uh, I think my favorite memory of tour was in Slovenia, which is in Europe. Um, kind of, you know, like a further West than, than Germany and a lot of the places people end up going on tour in Europe. Um, yeah. the reason was like, it's a country that I I'd heard of, but I could never put it on a map. Um, I, I like a lot of geography. I can usually place countries on maps pretty easily. This was one that when we went on this tour, I was like, where Slovenia, where exactly is that? And I had to look it up when we got there. I was like, how does anybody even know who we are in this place? Like I barely even know where it is, let alone like how could somebody know who my band is? And this I was don't... right after we put the Chum Fiesta video out. So like oh. it was big on YouTube and like people in Slovenia were just getting a lot of their music off of YouTube already at this point. So it's like, I think 2006, maybe 2007, we were on tour with Darkest Hour and we had an off date. Oh. And we went over to Slovenia, we rolled up and there were people already there with like inflatable sharks. They were wearing like those arm like floaty things. They were dressed up like- uh, Awesome. Um, yeah, like body, uh, not bodyguard. Yeah, no, not bodyguards, like lifeguards. Yeah, dressed up as lifeguards. They started chanting David Hasselhoff before we played. It was like the actor from Baywatch. It was like, it was like ridiculous, but they just like, they knew a ton about our band already. And they were like the nicest people, super pumped. And they did like, really cool pit moves that like i've not seen people do like they all lined up in a row and then acted like they were rowing a boat together and like it was oh. it was just like it just felt like a really cool party um oh. that was probably one of my favorite touring experiences just because it blew me out of the water i didn't know what to expect and by the time we got there i was like i left and i was like this is one of my favorite places ever yeah yeah i know where slovenia is on a map because i kind of learned all 197 countries because i like geography nice but uh, I did interview Mike from Darkest Hour recently, so. Yeah, the dude. Mike's awesome. Yeah, he he produced our um, our last record, Are You Serious? The last full length we put out on Victory. Um, Mike was uh, the producer for that record. He was really fundamental in us even getting the record done. Wait, he's so a he's producer kind of, too? I thought he was just a guitar player. He does a lot of stuff. He he writes um he writes music for the Discovery Channel too, I think sometimes. Like some of the background music. He's got his fingers in everything, man. He's one of those, one of those guys. He, he tells you something you're like, oh, of course you do that too. He does everything. Yeah. So what was the first concert you attended and how old were you? The first concert I ever attended, I was 14. Yeah, 13 or 14. And it was the Nine Inch Nails Downward Spiral Tour. Uh, I wasn't allowed to go. My parents were like, no way can you go see this band. Uh, so I snuck out of my house actually, and went to go see this concert. And then my friends dropped me off. My friend's parents dropped me off at my house. And then I went and slept in the shed behind my parents' house and then woke up in the morning and pretended like I had just gotten dropped off from a sleepover. 
you know, oh. it was uh, definitely a one of my riskier moves, but I ended up not being like it pulled it off and didn't even tell them until I was like probably 24. Wow. And then I that was right around the same time I went to the first warp tour uh, oh. in a parking lot. I went to that by myself. My dad just dropped me off and That's I went cool. and hung out. And that was my one of my first exposures to like kind of pseudo hardcore because uh, Civ uh, played that and Orange Nine Millimeter played that, which is members of uh, Grill Biscuits and Burn like some really old hardcore bands. Uh, and then I actually like the fest ended and my dad hadn't picked me up yet. I was just kind of hanging out reading like skate magazines you get for free at these festivals. That's and cool. uh, the Chaka from Orange Nine Millimeter skated by me on a skateboard. He's like, hey, you can't hang out over here by yourself in the dark. You know, like come over by the, the tour buses. You can't come on the bus or anything. You're just a kid, but at least you'd be in a safe place till your dad picks you up. Cause it's like the era before cell phones, right? So yeah. like I couldn't call my dad and be like, the show's over, come pick me up. I just had to wait till the time he said to be there. Uh, so like I enter, I got to see all these bands kind of talking to each other and interacting with each other. And that was right after I'd seen them on all these stages, like no use for name played quicksand, I think played, um, sublime was supposed to play, but they got kicked off because the dude's dog bit somebody. So they, uh, getting to see all these bands interact with each other and kind of like just be normal humans that got off of work and are just skating around grilling food, hanging out. It really kind of opened my eyes to like, oh, this is just like people on the stage are just normal people that just do normal stuff. Uh, and it kind of removed that whole hero ideology from the, the equation for me. And I, that was probably the beginning of me wanting to be in a band. I was like, this looks awesome. Like, I want to do this. Yeah, I do. I want to be in a band, too. Also, um, on the uh, show you snuck out for, how did you yeah. pay for the tickets? Um, I had a paper route since I was in sixth grade. And I was making like just like this is like 90s money. Uh, so like it's probably you got to do some like equation as to what it actually be worth now. But I was probably making the equivalent of like seventy five dollars, one hundred dollars a week. So like as like a 12 year old that started. So I was buying CDs all the time and just like, you know, wasting my money just like I still do. But, you know, like I just ended up getting the tickets that way. I think I even paid for my friend's ticket. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So what, what's a band you suggest other people go see live? Well, we talked about this band a minute ago because I'm wearing their shirt, but this is my favorite band to see live lately is uh, Gate Creeper. It's probably my favorite recent death metal band. Uh, they just bring this really raw, fun energy. Um, it's super heavy. They look like what you expect a death metal band to look like when they have these skulls and chains on their amp, but their, their riffs are heavy. Uh, they, they, they rip it, and it's good circle pit in music, and I love a good circle pit. Oh. So, non-music related questions. Where do you live? Yeah. Right now, I live in Madrid, Spain. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I I really want to go there. Um, yeah. wait, I, so, I teach uh, elementary school music here at the American school. That's cool. Um, earlier, you said that um, the new record is coming out at, at, out at 12. Is it coming out at 12 in the USA, or is it coming out at 12 in Spain? That was a question I had, too. I was like, how does this roll out? So what I looked up and found out, we're not putting out a whole record. We're just putting out like one song right now. We're going to do one song a week for the next three weeks. Um, but the, the one song we're putting out tomorrow, uh, it's going to come out at midnight in each time zone as it goes. So like you guys on the East Coast will get it at midnight. But then in, in Chicago, in the central time zone, they won't get it till like an hour later. So like I'll get to listen to it um, in a couple hours, like in five hours here. And it's going to take you guys a little bit for you guys to listen to it because well, I'm calling you from the future. You must have uh, already gotten to um, hear it because you made it. Well, yeah, I've heard it a bunch of times, but like yeah. I haven't heard it on Spotify. You know, like if there's something different, I still want to hear it like on the app or like tell my phone to just play it. You know, like that's that's awesome. Yeah. So what is your favorite movie? My favorite movie of all time is Office Space. Uh, oh. It was directed by Mike Judge, who did Beavis and Butthead and Idiocracy. Uh, it's just like a, I don't know if you have you ever seen office space, Do you know, this movie, uh, no, but I no, have, it's, a, seen. it's about a guy who hates his cubicle job. And then he gets hypnotized because he wants the hypnotist to like make him feel like he doesn't have to go to work anymore. But then the hypnotist oh. dies in the middle of like being hypnotized. So now he just stays hypnotized and never comes out of it. And he doesn't care about work. And he comes in, he's like, whatever, like takes his cubicle apart. And like, it's, it's just a, you know, wow. it's a good, funny movie. That sounds fun. Yeah. Not for him it, uh, yeah. i mean his his outlook on work was a lot more fun than his outlook before because he's like why am i even doing this it just like i'm not gonna get paid anymore if i work any harder so like i'm just gonna do the bare minimum to not get fired yeah i like beavis I and butthead. I what's that i like beavis and butthead 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. who does it? It's classic. It's the same director. The guy who like created Beavis and Butthead made this movie. Have you seen the Sick of It All episode? No, I I wait. I'm sure I have. But I can't retain it right now off the top of my head. Tell me about it. It's the um step down music video. Oh, and they're watching it? Yeah, with like mosh moves. Yeah, do they do they end up smashing up their whole house? Uh no, they kind of make up their own. Let's just say that. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna look this up on YouTube. I'm sure I can find it. Yeah. Um, it's something else. So how long would you survive in a zombie apocalypse? Man, I mean, are they slow zombies or fast zombies? Um, a mix. Yeah, because that's like I've thought about this. And like you see, like, I don't know, like the movies where the zombies can run after you. Is that's a different survival strategy when they're just doing yeah. this slow crawl trying to break in. Um, I feel like I could make it a week at least, you know? Yeah. Probably. I, could... I would lock myself somewhere high up and elevated and hope I have enough food. Yeah. Um, okay, so if I was just like in my house and I had like not really any materials, I would last like five minutes. But if there's like a a survival shelter or something that I went to yeah. Survive, I'd last like a while. See, like my my apartment right now is up on the fifth floor. Uh, Uh, There's a gate to get in. There's my locked door that has a padlock on it. There's a gate to get into the building. Then there's another gate and another gate before you can come through. So, like the one gate would be easy for them to crawl over. If they're fast zombies that can climb over fences, uh, that'd be something. If they can, yeah, it really depends on what the skill set of the zombies is. But like. I think you could survive more than five minutes in your house, you know? Well, if they if they were, like, fast and they could just break in. Yeah, that's the thing, right? It is, like, a, it's a thought of fast zombies versus slow zombies. Yeah. Also, here's another question. Can the zombies go underwater? Um, like in Pirates of the Caribbean, where they can go underwater. Like, do you can't, how are you, like, the pirate, uh, pirate zombies go underwater? And, like, that's you can't, you can't hide from them. But, I mean, like, they can... if you can't go underwater, I can live on an island. They can, I guess they can go underwater, uh. Except, I guess they couldn't swim very well, but they can not die. I guess in water. Right, so they can just like walk on the bottom and like go to where they need to go. And you got, you got, you're coming up with some tough zombies. Yeah. Do I get um, to be a zombie if they get me though? Right. Well, I guess that that could be kind of fun. Just like, yeah. uh, just committing atrocities. Committing atrocities. I think that's a good uh, album name. Yeah. So, um, Mike from Darkest Hour uh, said he'd find an island to survive, too. Yeah, I mean, but it is dependent on if they can go underwater or not, you know? Also, where would you find an island, and how would you know where they are? Well, I mean, yeah. Because any way that I could find an island, somebody else could also find it, right? Do you just, like, go on Google Maps and just, like search till you find an island off the coast of spain probably would be one option but i'm kind of assuming that if like the zombie apocalypse has started google maps doesn't work anymore oh you know, yeah like, true i would think like our cell phones probably stopped working uh i live in a really populated city with a lot of people kind of stacked on top of each other oh. um i don't think i'd make it very long trying to get out of the city because it's just like it's like six story buildings all the way around the whole city. There's just, there's people everywhere. Like trying to get on the Metro is almost like a zombie apocalypse anyway. Like this morning I tried to get to, to get to work. This, the train was so full that I had to like back up into the door and try to like push some people out like backwards just to get into the train. And then the doors closed and they were like this close to my face. Wow. Yeah. It was packed in there. So I'm assuming you speak Spanish cause you live in Spain. Nope. Are the jokers that, Nope, I don't at all. <laughs> like I speak very little. I'm taking How? Spanish lessons. I've only been here for like three weeks. I just oh. moved here. Um, it's definitely one of the reasons I moved here was to try to work on my Spanish and, and get better at it. Um, I can understand uh, probably 20% of what I hear, 15%, but like constructing okay. sentences and having a conversation is still very difficult for me. And then I have an accent and it's a whole thing, you know? Yeah, um, I, I'm trying to learn French. It's pretty hard, but... Yeah, I'm good. I'm probably gonna go to France with my aunt in the spring. Yeah. So, um, what are you using to try to learn it? Like an app or something? Uh, Rosetta Stone. It's Rosetta Stone, nice. 
Yeah, I, I tried Duolingo and that's kind of like fun game stuff, but I think I need something yeah. a little more uh, challenging now just to like push push it a little farther. Um, they, they do offer, there's like Spanish speaking schools here and you can just take lessons. So that's probably the best way to do it is just have somebody you can speak to and practice, you know? Yeah, that's like, that's the best way to talk with people. Um, I went to France in 2016 and I, I really enjoyed it. And cool. I think for the most part, if you try to speak a little French with people, they're going to be... Uh, much more accepting of you than if you just uh, like insist on speaking English. Uh, yeah. So it's a good idea to have a little bit down if you're going to travel there for sure. Yeah. Bonjour. Uh, je m'appelle Gabe. Hi, my name is Gabe. Yeah, that's pretty good. Parlez-vous français? What was what were the words before français? Parlez-vous? Doesn't that mean like, do you speak French? I don't know. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah, you know more than I do, I think already, but that's cool. Okay. Say it again. Like, how do you say my name is Gabe? Uh, bonjour, je m'appelle Gabe. Je, je m'appelle Gabe. Je m'appelle Jean. Yeah. See. Si. Oh, wait, that was Spanish. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty close to France. I think I'm only like four hours from the Pyrenees uh, Mountains, which are the divider between Spain and France. Yeah, Spain, uh, it does border France, so. Yeah. I want to so, climb some of those mountains. They look, they look dope. Yeah. So if you could live one day as any kind of animal at all, what would you choose and why? I think I might have an idea. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to say shark, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 you're going to just chomp everything and just like everything is scared of you. Like a great white shark rolling around, just yep. ripping stuff up. But then maybe an orca whale because the orca whales are like, they seem to have more fun. Great whites are just killing machines. That's all they do is kill, kill, kill. And they Wait, got little tiny brains. But orca whales dolphin. are just like, they're like vindictive. Like they just like, they do stuff just to be brutal. Um, But then I thought, Maybe I'd want to be a sloth because you don't do anything. You just kind yeah. of hang out and eat leaves, you know? But if you were a dolphin, they kind of can defend themselves from sharks. Yeah. And also, they, they just chill and go in the ocean and just have fun. And they hang out with their friends. You always see dolphins in groups, you know? Yeah. Uh, I was at the beach recently, and it wasn't even that far out. It was maybe, like, 200 feet out, and there were just, like, dolphins going diving. Yeah. And have you ever been on a boat where they chase the boat? Um, no. So, like, sometimes you're on a boat and, like, the dolphins will go, like, next to the boat like that, like, jumping Whoa. in and out of the water. I've, um, I've seen uh, some different dolphins in different parts of the world, but they're they're pretty cool, man. They are. What so, about you? What kind of animal would you be? Um, either a dolphin, a monkey, um, maybe, like, a capybara or something. Ooh, that'd be, I, you know, meerkats look like they're pretty stoked most of the time too. That's another cool yeah. animal, but that's only because of like, uh, that the one King Julian is the, the meerkat, I think, right. From Madagascar. That's the dude that I like. And he had that show on Netflix. I watched that. I watched that one all the time. He's hilarious. So if I could be like that dude who just wants to dance and shake his butt all day, like that's, that's probably the life I'd want to live. Yeah. Um, also in Delaware, it's, I think it's like around seven or eight States maybe. You can own a monkey as a pet legally. That, that sounds like a terrible idea. It sounds it sounds like an amazing idea. I, well, it depends what kind of monkey. If it's like a smaller monkey, maybe. But there was that like chimpanzee that like murdered her like the owner of of mm -hmm. like because like some of these monkeys are way stronger than people think, and they're like yeah. wild animals. You know, like yeah. I don't know about having it as a pet. To me, that scares me. But like. You do you. If you want to get a monkey, all the more power to you. Well, I think it'd be an amazing idea, but also a horrible idea at the same time. So Yeah, maybe. I mean, there's only one way to find out, really. Yep. Ah, oh, whatever. Stick it to me, monkeys. So, if you could tell your 10-year-old self anything at all, what would you tell him? Wow. Wow, what a concept. Um... You're good at what you do. Okay. So stop looking at, like, I would look at people that play guitar and be like, how'd they get so good at guitar? And not really realize that you're good at what you do. So if you take the time to play guitar over a long period of time, you'll get good at guitar. And sometimes when I was like that age, I would feel like my life was already like predetermined. And like, I, you know, if I'm not good at guitar now, like I'll never be good at guitar. Uh, or like, if I'm not good at this thing, I'll never be good at this thing. And not really realizing that it just takes like a long period of small little pieces of growth. Um, and also stop worrying about what other people think. 
Um, when I was 10, uh, I was still homeschooled. And I'm so 10. I hadn't gone to public I'm school yet. And like, huh? I'm 10 and I'm homeschooled. Nice. Have you ever gone to public school at all? No. Yeah, I, I didn't until I was 12. Um, and so then I experienced like the social world very differently than other people did. And it, it was very concerning to me what other people thought of me um, and not really realizing how little that matters uh, as yeah. you get older in life, you know? So those, those are a couple of things I'd probably tell myself and like, also just like, don't take things too seriously, man. Just have a good time. So uh, would you like to add anything before we end the podcast? Uh, check out new songs just popped on Spotify. Uh, check okay. us out at Furnace Fest. I mean, Gabe's going to be there. Yep. And I'm probably going to ride a shark. You're, you're not going to probably ride a shark. I'm expecting you to ride a shark. I want to see this. Okay. Absolutely. I just ordered like 36 inflatable sharks. And my friend ordered 12 more. And we're just trying to like flood the whole thing with a circle pit of just sharks running and going in a circle. Just that is around. amazing. Yeah. I just hope there's actually people there to watch us because we play at like 1255 in the afternoon. So it's the we're like the second or third band. So get there early on Friday. Come check us out. We'll definitely be there. Absolutely. I would hope for it. So thanks to John for joining me today. And thanks to all of you for watching or listening. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel or other streaming platforms. Until next week. Bye. Kids in the pit. <laughs>